good afternoon here in hong kong and welcome back after the after the lunch let's start with the uh, first session of this conference uh, which is ectoparasite zoonotic vector borne pathogens and uh, for this uh, first part uh, first session of this conference our first speaker is uh, sabir hussain Sabir Hussain is a PhD candidate here at City University of Hong Kong. He has published 18 journal papers and presented his research in 13 international conferences around the world. He has been awarded with Outstanding Academic Performance Award by City University of Hong Kong recently. Today, he is going to present diversity and distribution of zoonotic babesiosis and thaleriosis and their vectors in ruminants for Asia. Sabir Hussain, please. Uh, you can unmute yourself and start the presentation. And thank you very much uh, for your nice introduction. Can you please confirm? Uh, can you share my screen? See, see my screen? Yes, we can see you, Sabir Hussain. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, today, I'm going to present a review on diversity and distribution of zoonotic babesiosis and thaleriosis. They are vectors in ruminants from Asia. So here is our team members, Sayyid Saadul Hassan Bukhari, Hussain Balet, and Asif. So in this topic, I will try to include Thaleria and its economic significance, a brief life cycle about Thaleria, what are the main vectors for Thaleria and Babesia species transmission, distribution of Thaleria and Babesia in Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh, and other Asian countries, main zoonotic Babesia species that are commonly transmitted from animals to humans, and the prevalence of zoonotic babesiosis in humans. So as you know, most of us among know that Thaleria is basically main threatens to the economic industry and causing huge economic losses around the world. There are different form of Thaleriosis, like here you can see Thaleria uh, annulata, which is basically major problem in Asia and is also known as Tropica Thaleriosis or Mediterranean Thaleriosis. While Thaleria parva, it is also known as East Coast fever and it is found in Africa and other Asian countries. Thaleria orientalis, which causes benign thaleriosis. And in small ruminants, Thaleria lestopardi, which is causing malignant ovine thaleriosis. If you will talk about the economic losses, then you can see that five to 25% of the losses are only occurred by the thaleriosis. So we can assume that how much cause economic losses in the dairy industry. So if you will talk about the mortality rate, then mortality rate is 100% in those areas which are non-endemic, especially related due to the East Coast fever or Thaleria parva. This is basically non-endemic means in which disease is not present and suddenly that disease outbreak occurs. So that's why the mortality rate is high in those areas. While Sabi, the mortality, yes, please. Sabi, Sabi, I'm sorry to interrupt. Would you please share your presenter mode? Okay, you cannot see right now. Okay. Yes, now it's okay. Now it's okay. Okay. It's okay. So, thaleriosis basically 5 to 25% of huge economic losses occur by the thaleriosis, while the mortality rate is low in those endemic areas, which are 100% in those. in so here you can see the brief life cycle of Thaleria. Asexual reproduction occur in the ruminant host, while sexual reproduction occur in the tick host. So whenever any infected tick bite, then it may transmit sporozyte into the vertebrate host. So as a result, the tick feed and transmit sporozyte into the vertebrate host. So what is sporoza schizogony? Schizogony is basically asexual reproduction that is basically found in the ruminant host. So as a result, it may attack and the red blood cells and affected animal, anemic and may 
is attack on the lymphocytes. So it's a, we can easily see the animal affected with thalidomide. So so as a result, the excessive reproduction occur in the midgard. So in this way, this is the basically brief life cycle that occur in the uh, from tick to the ruminant host. So if we will talk about the main vectors that are basically three to four main vector species that are basically transmission for the tick genera, hylioma, hemophysalis, rhephicephalus, and amblyoma. These are basically four to five tick genera species that are mainly responsible for the transmission of thaleriosis. So here is a basically pictures that I have also collected some ticks from uh, seven districts of Punjab, Pakistan here. You can see the cattle litter that is infested with ticks. Similarly, here you can see I'm also collecting ticks from the udder of the cattle. So a huge as around the, uh, you can say a small holder farm, most of the farm are infested with ticks. And luckily, you know, I also uh, collected a lot of data. Uh, you can see the aphicephalus, macropolis, dirt cell and ventral side, emblem, varigiatum, hilum impeltatum, dorsal and ventral side, Hyloma anatolicum and Hephicephalus appendiculatus. So these are basically major tick species that are mainly trans for, uh, transmission of the thaleriosis in ruminants. So if we distribute the thaleria in India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, then India is divided into five different zones, central, southern, western. Similarly, you can see the uh, Pakistan is divided into Punjab, Balochistan, KPK, while the, the, here you can see the Bangladesh is divided into different zones, northeastern, western. So what are the major thaleria species that are found in cattle and buffalo, thaleria annulata, orientalis, while in goat and sheep, thaleria lastocordae, and the thaleria annulata. Similarly, in India, thaleria orientalis, mutants, in goat and sheep, lastocordae. While in Bangladesh, you can see thaleria mutants, orientalis, while the thaleria annulata is the only species that is found in goat sheep. So if you will talk about the common species that is commonly found in all Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh, then thaleria annulata is the only species that is commonly found in all species of Asia. So here I have summarized all those country-wise, host-wise, and thaleria species found in cattle, buffalo, sheep, goat, as I have already explained in the previous slides. So if we'll talk about the zoonotic Babesia species, uh, zoonotic Babesia, although there are various species of zoonotic uh, species of Babesia other than like Babesia bovis, bijamina, but these are not zoonotic. I will try to cover those uh, zoon uh, species that are commonly transmitted from animals to humans. And the three main zoonotic Babesia species, Babesia divergens, Macroti, and Venatorum. Babesia divergens is basically originated from bovines, Macroti originated from rodents, and Venatorum is present in other parts of the world, including Asia. And it may transmit it to humans through tick bite or blood transfusion, while majority of the cases transmitted to the, through the tick bites, only few cases were reported through the blood transfusion. I will discuss later on the, the transmission routes and other reported cases in Asian countries. Here you can see the Exodus perspicillatus ticks in Asia that is basically main responsible trick for the transmission of zoonotic babesiosis in small rodents and mammals and it may, as a result, it may transmit it into the human beings. Here you can see the average prevalence of zoonotic babesiosis in animal population of the Asia. Here you can see the major 13.4% uh, were found in the Japan, then 5.3% were found in Cambodia, Laos, and Thailand, while 6.26% were found in China, while so 2.1% were found in South Korea. So here I have summarized all the uh, CPCs, zoonotic Babesia CPCs in animals and humans and the number of cases reported in different countries. So here you can see that maximum number of cases were reported in China, 181 cases, and the Babesia macrotai, Venatorum, Divergence, and Thrasalize species were reported in humans. Similarly, Japan, Babesia macrotai, and Divergence were reported from animals, but they didn't report any zoonotic Babesia species in human beings. Similarly, in South Korea, Babesia sensu stricto motisai were reported in South Korea, and they were basically, all those cases were having the history of tick bite. They didn't report any blood transfusion history. 
while in the singapore babesia macrotai were reported and this basically singapore have in for a single case were reported having the history of tick bite and they were recently uh, traveled to us and then as a result the, having the fever anorexia high fever so whenever they found uh, they confirmed to the pcr in situ hybridization and different diagnostic techniques were used for the confirmation of the babesia similarly in india babesia species were reported in 37 year old man in gujarat province of india so they were this is the basically first babesia species they first they were confusing with the malaria so they tried to do the antigen detection test so the plasmodium antigen tests were negative so they confirmed then afterwards they tried to do the antibiotic but antibiotic trial was unsuccessful so they take the blood smear and then afterwards they confirmed that the animal were uh, then the human were affected with babesia so they confirmed that this is the basically first babesia species that were reported in india so we can assume that there are zoonotic babesia circle is transmit uh, transmitted so we can assume that might be possible pakistan bangladesh are also quite at risk so we need to be more careful so here is our published pa papers diversity and distribution of thelaria species and their vectors in ruminants from india pakistan and bangladesh i have summarized all those things so if you are interested you can read the paper in depth along with that here is our uh, zoonotic babesia species as an emerging public health threat in asia so i have collect i have taken all the data from these two papers so if you are interested you can study in depth so i would like to thanks our team members sayya sadu lassan bukhari balit and asib they helped me a lot during making powerpoint presentation and other nice discussions so thanks all so if you have questions i will be very happy to answer all those questions at the end of the sessions along with that if you Uh, you can ask me by email. Here is my email, or you can ask me by the Twitter. So I will be very happy to answer all those questions. Thank you so much that all of you are here.